Whenever a new vehicle comes out like this brand new Silverado heavy duty turbo diesel truck, we want to know every detail about it. And that's exactly the case here. But this video is all about the Chevy Silverado EV electric pickup truck. Roman and I got a chance to speak with Nicole Kratz, the chief engineer. We also included that interview in our podcast this week, but we wanted to dig down and show you exactly what Nicole had to say because we had three very tough questions to ask her. So I want to roll that interview right now, basically uncut for you to see what the chief engineer of the new electric Silverado has to say about her truck. Nicole, hello. Hi. We've spoken many times. We have. Right. So last time I saw you, we were talking about the RST Chevy Silverado EV truck. Yes. But now we're standing next to a work version whoa, 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 whoa. of it. Her truck. My truck. Why is he interrupting this us? This is a Silverado EV work truck that is my personal Wait, ride so every belongs, single day. so belongs to you? It is mine. Okay. So... It's very clean. How it's many miles? Well, you're the chief engineer. I am. So it makes sense that you would drive one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but how many miles have you put Over on Over 10,000 miles. Can I see? Um, yeah, you can okay. see. Okay. trust her. No, no, you no, should see. I want to see. I think I just hit 10,078 miles. In how long? Like just a few months? Just yeah, like... end of April. Okay. Well, this so is this is June. Yeah. So you've really been testing this thing. So it turns out I'm building a house and I have to drive 170 miles each way to uh, to meet with the builder and build the house. So I get lots of good mileage on my truck. Ask if he charges it at home. <laughs> do you charge it at home or are you using public infrastructure or both? I do both. My truck okay. can get from my house to the new house that I'm building and back without charging. Because um, you've announced a big number. So this was recently. 450 miles. On the work truck. Boom. On this one. Yes. Yes. With it's the, currently at 90% state of charge showing that it has 400 miles of range. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. That, that's really impressive for it's an electric. It's actually getting 450 miles when I drive it. And so I how, don't um, drive it lightly. Well, right. So you still have 510 horsepower yep. combined, right? Yep. Two motors. So it's still all wheel drive four by four. It is. So, but I, I was actually driving this truck, um, not yours. <laughs> I wouldn't touch your truck. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 mine's special. No, I'm I, I was driving a truck in this fleet and I noticed a couple things. First of all, maneuverability, right? Yes. That hit me in the face right away. But this is not an all wheel steer vehicle. It is not four wheel steer. So how did you do that? The um, independent rear suspension and the front steering is just, we've got the all new architecture, ground up build. We keep talking about this, you know, purpose built for the purposes of full size truck, but also looking at the pain points of truck owners. So we purposely made in steering radius, steering turns, turn circles, like we built it all in to be the best that we could so that we get rid of all the pain points that customers have about full-size trucks. Because it's a big truck. It's a full-size truck. Yeah. So Five foot 11 bed. I'm, you know what shocked me also? The size of the cab. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I think I now know why you put this truck into this event. Okay. The, you wanted them to wash it for you. I, is that true? This is a funny story. So I have two yellow labs and three okay. kids. And the three kids in the two yellow labs can fit, fit wonderfully comfortable in this back seat. But I don't see so, any hair. I don't see any dog hair. Um, there is dog hair. I had to clean it up myself. Okay. Oh, maybe not. Oh, there's evidence right here of dog hair. Okay. This truck, because of the vinyl work truck flooring and things, I took a leaf blower and blew all of the um, hair out of the truck and cleaned this truck myself. And it's got basically vinyl floor, kind of like plasticky floor, right? Yep. Yeah, it's great to clean, easy to maintain. Like I said, the dog hair just comes right out of it. So. It's a really easy to clean, easy ownership experience for our fleet um, customers. And then you have a couple more numbers. So let's let's do. go to the business end of the truck. Yes. So 1,400 pounds of payload. Yeah, that's up from our reveal. And 10,000 towing. 10,000 pounds towing. I'm really glad you did that. Yes. You know, as you're progressing in your development yep. and, and design, because work trucks, you know, they always look for more, right? More, yeah. more, more, more. I mean, we really wanted to focus on an EV pickup truck that was still a pickup truck at its base. And to have a best pickup truck with the best trailering dynamics, capability, range, payload. I mean, these are all things that are important to our customers. It's a five foot 11 bed. It fits everything in there it needs to. Um, it's a compelling uh, truck and it's purposely built 
from the ground up on an all new architecture. So we didn't take the existing Silverado architecture and put a battery under it. We built it all in. And by doing that and developing our own Ultium battery um, packs, mm -hmm. We're able to just capitalize on the efficiencies across gotcha. the truck. There's a big controversy here um, yes. I, we have to address because I think some of the viewers and listeners would say there is no cut line between the bed and the I cab. Know, I know. Right? So is this a unibody? But we discussed, remember, we talked I about it. I know, we last talked time. about this. It's not a unibody and it's not a body on frame. So what the heck is it? It's a new kind of architecture that <laughs> everybody laughs at me when I say Ulta body. And you're even still laughing about this. Well, Ulta not body. about the name. But it's still, I mean, I'm envisioning kind of a skateboard. Am I right? There is a I'm battery in... pack that is a skateboard-like structure okay. that acts as part of the structure for safety, for dynamics, for all the structural feel, for noise and vibration, for ride. The center of gravity is nice and low because of that battery pack. And then on top of that, this continuous body um, is bolted to the battery pack, and that makes up the total structure. So you could think of the battery as a frame, but it's not a full frame because it doesn't go across to the back of the pickup bed. So it's literally an hmm. all new architecture that we've designed a to hybrid. get all the efficiencies. A hybrid between <laughs> body on frame and body frame integral. I, I gotcha. But not a hybrid propulsion. Right, it's all electric. All electric. Sorry I used that term. It's okay. Okay. I so, forgive you. So I see you have a tonneau cover, I which do. is hard folding, yep. hard folding cover. Um, interesting. What are we looking at? I'm, gonna, I'm, okay. I'm looking at your broken so, antenna. So, I know. So, do you so, want to know why that happened? Why is your why antenna broken? broken? I can't tell you really on film. But I was using this truck for camping, and I have been maximizing the usage of the truck. All right, so, so, and so it's a little quick fix to fix my antenna. All right, so Andre's being nice because you guys are friends. So I'm going to ask you the hard questions. Sure, go for Whoa. it. Are you okay? All right. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm gonna go be, for it. I'm Let's gonna try. Be, I'm going to be the mean guy, okay? Let's try. All right, so... No, it's three, top three in TFL fashion, top three. Yes. Okay, number three, work truck. Yes. No uh, multi pro tailgate, no mid gate. Work trucks don't have multi pro tailgates. RST has both of those. As a yep. work guy, wouldn't I want like the mid gate? Wouldn't I want the more efficient? You know? I don't think so. I no? think fleet customers are looking for usages, not necessarily full versatility. I mean, the reality is that price is still a point for them, so yep. we're not going to add in extra features that they're not frankly asking for. We sat down with our fleet customers and asked them questions about range, asked them questions about usability and capability, and um, the off-board power was really the big one for them that they wanted. We need a, a good price point for an EV fleet pickup truck as well, so we're not going to put all the bells and whistles from the RST into the work truck. Okay. At the end of the day, it's a work truck. All right, so that's number three. Number yep. two, I was just on your website. Yes. Uh, and you're advertising 39000 plus dealer handling and such, but it's not going to be that, is it? It's going to be a lot more. Yeah, I think Amy talked more about that. She's yeah. probably more the expert in it. What I'll say is that um, the vehicle will be a slightly higher price. It's going to come with more range and features, and there's price pressures all around the industry, so I don't think it would be surprising to say. It'll still be a price leader for who it is versus our competition. And I think that's what stays important. All right, number one, this yes. is my softball question. What's your favorite part of the truck? That's not a hard question. I know, but come on, you gotta end that up with That is not a hard one. question no. because everybody that knows me knows. <laughs> they're, all like, they're all like, uh oh, what's he gonna ask? <laughs> I, yeah, everybody's nervous. I am what's a tailgater yeah. and I am a partier. Okay. So the offboard power of the 10.2 kilowatts. I just took our team onto a camping trip where I put the tent in the bed I put the air mattress that was powered through the offboard power into the tent, and I had my heated blanket running all night, keeping me warm because when we went camping, it was still cold at night. Yeah, it is so a game the changer. offboard power for me is like huge. We take it to my cabin that I'm redoing. I just said I was building that house 170 miles away, and um, we were able to use all the tools to cut all the wood, make you know stairs to get into the different locations before the cement guy came. Everything that we can do out of this pickup truck. The second favorite thing is trailering. Most of the time that I'm trailering either my snowmobiles up north in the winter or my boat in the summer, um, I forget the trailers on the back. And I think that's a funny story. I mean, it's not funny, but it's funny because it means that it's so good and it's been developed so well that you forget that you're towing a trailer. So, that's unusual. So I'm not gonna name the competitor, but there is another competitor here. There is, in, in, not here, in, in Michigan, but in yes, Michigan. Yes. Uh, and uh, they have an electric truck that they has do. a range, stated range of just over 300 miles. And of course we've done a lot of, well, we like to say 
towing, you say trailering, you say whatever you want. Towing's fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we found that it's very difficult because what ends up happening is you basically cut that range in half. Yep. So with 450 miles of range, I feel like you could go 200 miles, maybe even more. Is that possible? Um, we have done the comparisons and testing yeah. and for the same trailer between an ICE and an EV, you get the same fall off of range. So the same performance degradation. You know that towing depends on the type of trailer, the aerodynamics, the speed, the weather conditions, a lot of other things around it. But what I will tell you is um, I've personally experienced towing in multiple conditions on the truck and it very much follows exactly what my um, internal combustion pickup truck does in terms of uh, range performance. Yeah, I think so if you get 20% less out of your ice, you're gonna see 20% yeah. less here. I think people don't realize that that is what happens in an internal combustion engine because it's much quicker to fill up, right? Sure, so, so of you, course. You, so gasoline has a lot more potential energy. Right. Uh, and so towing uses a lot more potential energy. And the other thing I think people don't realize is that in an internal combustion engine, most of that energy is used to heat certain parts and is wasted as heat, right? Mm -hmm. That's why there's no big air intakes on the front of this because you're not actually wasting. So this is much more efficient. Andre, what were we saying in terms of, uh, here, I'll give you the thing back, in terms of uh -oh. MPG, how that compares? Well, one gallon of gasoline is equivalent to about 33 uh, kilowatt hours of energy. Okay. That's a conversion that the EPA uses yep. to yep. convert from MPG to MPGE. So if this, you know, uh, we talked about the Hummer EV, which is kind of a relative to this truck. I've never heard of it before. No? Tell me more um, about so, it. So the Hummer EV. There's we, a C we, at the end of GM, right? Oh, GMC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. This is the Chevrolet. Uh -huh. so I, I understand. Okay. But, but we, we, we talked about, you know, that's a big vehicle, super square and boxy and yes, big. Yes, yes. Uh, but it still con 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 converts to about 60 MPGE. It's still a great so it's using that truck. energy energy efficiently. That's it what uses we're the energy efficiently. We've designed our own in-house batteries with the Altium architecture, right? The battery architecture. And what's most important about the competitor that you just talked about is um, it's not just about efficiency. It's about range. People keep saying, oh, well, I have a very efficient truck. Well, that doesn't matter if it only gets you 200 miles. If you only can get 100 miles of towing out of it, what matters is that we can go farther by over 100 miles of any other truck that's out there. So, so what's really important for this EV segment is getting that range. So why don't you ask her about that really cool thing you figured out, or she showed us about the spare tire. This oh. really thoughtful feature. We, we, were, we were kind of struggling <laughs> to figure it's, it out. It's really hard to show on this one because there's a four by eight yeah, there's sheet of plywood. plywood there. So, oh, this one, yeah. so truck, truck guys and gals, we, you know, I wanted to know how to change a spare tire. Um, and also while we're walking over here, I wanted They're to ask you, I was going to ask you about testing, right? Yes. Because we were talking about Alaska. We took one of our project trucks all the way to Alaska, which was the F-150 Lightning. Yep. Um, what kind of testing are you putting your trucks through? Hot, cold, cross country, local, um, altitude. So basically what you've done with Everywhere. trucks. Everywhere we've taken a full size truck, we've taken an EV full size truck. Yes. So cold. Climates, Cold climates, super hot climates, hot climates, altitude, grades, coastal, high elevation. Yeah. I've, I've always wondered, are EVs affected by altitude? Yeah, um, they get better. They do get better. It's yeah. like a fine white. No, because there's layer, less resistance, right? Well, first of all, they're more efficient if you're going downhill versus uphill because you can get a lot of regen braking yes. on the downhills. Yes. Um, and you have adjustable... Um, regen on this we have one pedal driving yes right but you can have almost no regen coasting correct you have normal regen and yep. then high regen yes. which i tried high which is, is strong high is a learned um driving habit but once you learn it it's a really great so you have to mod enabler. modulate the pedal kind mm -hmm. of can, yep. can you use high to tow yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because it would feel like it would give you much more braking. Yeah, plus you regain energy, right? And you're saving your trailer brakes too because you're regening, you know, the trailer weight is pushing the truck. So it's really great regen in, in one pedal high. I gotcha. So, right, so we came up to this truck. Roman showed underneath it. And you guys there's, asked me a question there's, earlier. There's a spare tire. Yes. By the way, it does not look like the spare tire is full size. Uh, as, as the other. It's is not that the correct? same as the road tire. It is not okay, the same so size. So it's a slightly smaller yes. diameter. Yep. But you have these little doors in the bed. We do. What is that about? That is how you access with that tool, that 
I'm not even going to say the, the right the, word. The, the wrench. The, yeah, the wrench, yeah. you know, rod tool. Yeah. That is how you access it. And w we put it on the inside of the truck bed so that when you close the tailgate, uh -huh. you are locked out and no one can steal your spare tire. Because so there is actually the, a lot of theft in spare tires, so by what, the way. So that was one of the pain points that the customers were talking about? Yes, pain okay. points for customers were okay. that we didn't you, lock you, you spare tires You know, Nicole, the other thing they can't steal is a catalytic converter. They can't steal the catalytic converter. That's correct. And it would it be have... really difficult to steal the battery. I'm just saying. Because <laughs> it I've does weigh a little bit. I've tried to drop the battery and it uh -huh. won't work very easily. It's pretty big. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I like Not a lot of stuff you can steal off this battery. <laughs> Well, yeah, plus the tailgate is lockable, right? Oh, all, yeah. all of it yeah. is lockable. Tailgate locks. So that's really cool. And you incorporated rails on the top of the bed mm -hmm. so you can have your racks. And you can system. see that you can still use accessories on the truck. There's been yeah. a lot of um, interest in accessories for the truck, especially from our fleet customers, ladder racks and things like that. So, so can you say anything about, so you, you initially, when GM, when Chevrolet announced the Silverado EV, you said potentially up to 20,000 pounds of towing. Yeah. Um, do you have something in the works? Can you say anything about what else you're working on? Um, or more payload? Can I just ask for more payload? Yes. So here's the thing. Okay. In every truck, a fully and in the segment, in the market as a standard, when people advertise payload and advertise towing, it's off of the models that are available that model year. So as we bring more models in with less fully loaded options, your payload will get better. So you'll absolutely see much higher payloads from our model year 25 lineup when we offer more than just one work truck, one RST. Right? And like one energy pack. Yes, right? there's Multiple just energy one packs. version of these trucks okay. right now going out, right? So the 450 mile truck has all of these options. You can't pick anything else. The reservations are sold out this year, as you guys heard earlier. When we open up reservations for model year 25 and start building model year 25, you will see payload numbers that increase. It really just depends on now, what do you want? Do you want maximum um, range? Do you want maximum towing? Do you want maximum payload? Do you want something in between? The offerings will be available for everything. Well, that's good news. Yes, it's because, it's a standard yeah. full-size truck well, you have to known start, thing. You have to start somewhere, yes. right? Yes. And then make progress Absolutely. from there. Okay. Do you have any more questions, Roman? I didn't any feel like you weren't that nice, by the way. I didn't think that was that hard. Well, I wasn't that hard? That's good, okay. Okay. Well, I figured, I just you know. thought it might be really hard. Well, well, I had one, I, okay, okay, hold on. I have one other hard okay, question. Okay, what's the hard one? What do you call your truck? Queen Bee. <laughs> okay. My truck is called oh, Queen, Queen Bee, Bee, which anybody who knows me knows exactly why <laughs> okay. my truck is called I, Queen I thought Bee. that was too personal. So no, I mean, no, absolutely right. not. Right, I, it, we, I didn't want to go there. Adjective animal, everyone, yeah. Even though Queen isn't an adjective, I decided to overrule. But yeah, I mean, I love being the chief engineer of this truck. You guys have met most of my team that have made this come true. Yeah. Everybody's heart and soul is in this truck with a passion for truck ownership. And every little bit, including the, lock, the way that we've locked up the spare tire has been thought through in just obsessive detail to make sure that we could get everything out of the truck from an all new architecture. So is it, is it uh, gratifying as a chief engineer to finally send your baby out into the world and yes. then to have customers you know, use it the way you intended them to use it or not? What I think is more important is that I don't worry about you guys driving the vehicles. Hmm. There's a lot of people out there who like go through a lot of you know, things to get these trucks ready for you to drive. I pulled mine up from my drive and it's running power for everybody else and it could go into that drive any moment. These trucks are absolutely capable, ready, and they're of high quality and just they speak for themselves. So I think you guys have driven them today. We did. You're going to um, have what, some you know love about trailering tomorrow. Trucks is um, they've got a long wheelbase. They're very heavy and they kind of ride like my dad had um, when he became successful, he bought a big old Cadillac, right, mm -hmm. in the 70s. Yeah. And that's kind of that 1970s Cadillac ride where you're just kind of floating yep. down the road. And, and I, I feel like, especially this truck, has that really... And, and you know, uh, look, it's, it's hard because there's a lot of politics now, unfortunately, with electric vehicles. Yeah. But, but to me, uh, the difference between electric and internal combustion is kind of heart versus head, right? Correct. One is very emotional, one is very intellectual. That's right. Do you uh, want to hear it versus what do you want to do with it? Exactly. Yep. And, and that's why I think with work trucks, I feel like that's a very intellectual thing, right? Because mm -hmm. it's about numbers. It's not about, you know, taking it to the drag street, even though these things are freaking fast. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> throw it until hell for a few minutes and then talk to me. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> but but I, think, I think if people realize that it's not better or worse, it's just different, then it becomes a much more uh, logical decision for people. I think it's really important, too, that it's not just about, like, 
big batteries can weigh it down, center gravity is better. I mean, when you look across the competitors, and we do this, right, because sure. we want to know our competitors just as much as our own, how we integrate it. So having that ground up build versus just choosing to take a current Silverado ice and putting batteries underneath it is a very different experience. The suspension is tuned specifically for this truck, so you're not getting, um, I would just say, uh, some of the tail wagging the dog feels that you get out of some of the other um, vehicles that are out on the market. The trailering dynamics and the overall ride and handling are connected to the truck and you feel connected to the road. So we're not um, trying to do anything that is covering something or, or you know, fixing a problem. We've created really great solutions and therefore didn't have problems to overcome. And, and then that's just honestly what it means to be able to do an all new architecture. It's the most exciting thing a chief engineer can ever do is grow an all new architecture. Uh, so once I, I had this conversation with one of the chief, former chief engineers of the F-150 and I said, mm -hmm. do you like being, and he said, no, it's terrifying because there's so much riding on it. Do you feel that pressure? I mean, let's face it, nope. this is a very important vehicle for it's GM. It's one of the most yeah. important vehicles for General Motors, not just in terms of, um, capability and showing that you know EV pickup trucks can be a force in the market but also just for overall our EV growth um, future I don't feel that pressure because I'm so confident how the truck is that's great I would feel that pressure if there was something I was worried about someone would find right. oh no someone's gonna find some there's no one's gonna find anything we are handing these trucks off and saying go drive them go run them through their paces Go take it out trailering the same way that you did with some of those competitive vehicles. We're going to knock your socks off. I'm confident. And you guys know I put 10,000 miles on my truck. I know what it can do. Yeah. I always like to think to myself, I wasn't, even though Andrea will make fun of me and my son does too, I wasn't old enough to be around when we went from horse and buggy to, you yeah. know, but we were living through this really cool time, it's an right? awesome Isn't time. It? I mean, and with change, there's opportunity. I felt like in the past, you know, there were these little incremental changes, right? Mm -hmm. And every little thing became very competitive, but now you've got a clean sheet and you can just go out and actually create the future yep. truck. Which is, as much as some people think that electrification isn't the future, it probably is. It's just, it's, the momentum is just too great. The momentum yeah. across the industry yeah, is exactly. there. And fun fact, I never drove an EV before I became the chief engineer for this truck. My, um, my leader at the time threw me in a Hummer EV for a weekend and said, you know, go, go figure it out. Mm. And I took my daughter to a uh, soccer tournament in Indianapolis and had to learn how to charge, what fast chargers were, how to do everything, how do I know I've got this range anxiety. And um, I think it was actually a really great experience to start out that way because I am a full-size truck owner, driver, user. I've been for my whole life. And so I brought this new perspective of an ICE owner to EVs and specifically focused on what are the pain points going to be? How do we get over them? How do we make it feel better for them? And that's really what this product is showing. And, you know, the other hard part that you're facing is electrification is not just about, you know, an electric truck. It's about a whole new language, like you just said. Absolutely. It's about, you know, going from miles per gallon to kilowatts per mile, right? There's, yep. just, there's just all this other thing that, that you guys are going to have to learn, or maybe you don't want to learn. I mean, obviously <laughs> GM also offers plenty of... Yeah, we'll help you. <laughs> yeah, you can choose. <laughs> Whatever you want to learn, yeah. Diesel. Or you could listen to TFL Talking Trucks podcast. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, Where they, they talk about all of the GM products available. <laughs> yes. And the Queen Bee. And the Queen Bee. Is that you or, the, or both? Um, probably both, both to right. be honest. Well, yeah. well, thank you very much for <laughs> yeah, your time. Yeah, it was great I'm, to meet I'm, you guys. I'm very grateful. Uh, and uh, Andre, um, thank you very Andre much Andre, as, as well. always, it's yeah. been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Ciao. There you have it. We had questions and Nicole had answers. Let me know what you think in the comments below and check us out at oldtfl.com for everything automotive in one place.